live from Founder Square, Neshoba County Fair. Final half hour of the program on this Wednesday, but don't forget we will be back right here on Founder Square at the Neshoba County Fair again tomorrow, and we will have another packed lineup of uh, political leaders and figures from across the state. But joining us now is our good friend, the Senator that represents District 5, Itawamba, Prentice, and Tishomingo Counties. He's the vice chairman of the Senate Corrections Committee. That would be Senator Daniel Sparks. Senator, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. It's good to be here. This is uh, always so much fun if you're a political junkie, right? This is where you you see a lot of these people that uh, uh, you hear talking all the time, read reports about them, uh, but unless you're in the Capitol, you don't see them a whole lot. But you come here, most of them are here. I like it out here under the trees and with the heat and everything else, uh, getting to press the flesh, as some people say. Uh, it's good. I think, you know, you, you, you serve the people of the state of Mississippi, the people that go out and work every day and uh, in the factories and the jobs and the fields and the farms. And uh, and, and sometimes we get uh, a little bit isolated in yeah. that very pretty building in Jackson, and it's yeah. good to get out and see people. Yeah. So did you catch any of the speeches this morning? I did. had opportunity to hear most all the speeches. Uh, Chairman Branding, course, in transportation, and really enjoyed working with her of course this is her home area yeah a lot of good work that's been done uh monies that's been uh put up by the state to try to draw down federal funds and also uh, as lieutenant governor mentioned to uh to speed up some of the projects that we're doing i think 75 million dollars was put into mdot specifically to speed up 23 24 projects uh into 22 so we've tried to be good stewards of the money that's out there senator branding mentioned and also the lieutenant governor mentioned uh, that uh, we you know, had a $1.3 billion excess last year, have about a $1.5 billion excess this year. And one of the things that's not being, I think, talked about enough is we uh, did a lot of projects this year, the MDOT. We had projects at home, different things. We did not have a bond bill, so we paid right. off uh, a certain amount of the bonding, around $300 million. And we intend to do that again this year. And that's one of the things that's beneficial for all Mississippians is that we are retiring debt without bringing more debt uh, on board. And we did that also with a uh, historic tax cut as well as a teacher pay raise. So, so I think that's trying to be a good steward of the resources as we continue to give money back uh, to the taxpayers or just not take it to begin with. So from an economic perspective, you, you got to like where the state is, right, Senator? We, we just had an, an, a, another surplus two years in a row, sizable surplus. And in, in this case, over 20% right. of the general fund, uh, our rainy day fund is maxed out. Right. We got that. We got that going on, and we didn't have a bond bill, so we didn't uh, add more debt. So we got to be happy about that. Now the lieutenant governor is uh, floated the idea uh, just on the program a few moments ago of sending some money back to the taxpayers. What do you think? He has, and we talked about that last year. That that did not come to fruition, but we had put that forward uh, as, as an opportunity to return money to the taxpayers that paid that money in. I'm, I am supportive of that. I also look at the fact uh, of the reality, and I think some of the discussions we had is the inflationary pressures. Our, you know, our budget in the state of Mississippi is a six billion to seven billion dollar budget, and when you're sitting with eight, nine, ten percent inflation rates, that's potentially five, six, seven hundred million dollars. I realize a lot of that is salary, and maybe it's not geared with inflation. But when Chairman Hobson at Appropriations has to come in and budget next year, that's maybe one of our biggest concerns as a country and as a state is the same services we provided based on this uh, inflationary environment we're in, how much more is government going to cost next year? That's maybe the most uh, disheartening thing is that it costs more to provide the same service. Yeah, I certainly understand that. So, uh, well, we had a, an active session, as you and I have discussed, uh, after the session this year. Got, some, I think, some major accomplishments, certainly some major legislation uh, got signed off. Some people may not view those as accomplishments. Just depends on your, your views on on those matters. But teacher pay raise, uh, uh, medical cannabis program was enacted, uh, and major tax reform. Uh, those were all, I, I think, kind of the, the the top three. I would say as far as sweeping legislation. But you serve, of course, uh, on the corrections committee, the, the vice chair of the corrections committee. What's on the on the radar there? You know, I think one of the biggest things that we deal with with corrections is we see violent crime across the country, and I think part of the concern with that is is we we do not respect law enforcement. We do not respect law. 
we do not respect rules we do not respect uh, restrictions as much as we should and uh, you know our concern is that we have that in the educational system which makes education more difficult we have it in our communities in our cities in our counties and we're trying to find the way to address crime and safety because we number one concern is the safety of the citizenry uh, with also looking at the rehabilitative side uh, of those who have been incarcerated because you know let's be honest some of the people that are incarcerated didn't have the same experience growing up that I had having a loving mother father being in church uh, having you know guidelines and rules that I had to abide by and as a state uh, that role is with the family but in a lot of cases unfortunately it's not been met and we have to say what can we do because we have people who are going to get out of jail who are going to get out of prison and the question is are, are they going to be prepared to maybe integrate into society and be successful or are they going to be a better criminal after spending time within the department of corrections and uh, you know we, we've spent a lot of money there there's a lot of effort been going on we're working with workforce training and development we want them to come out have a skill have a life support their family many of them have children we want to break that cycle if we can but in reality the first duty we have is the safety of the public absolutely uh it's it's just a, it's a situation though senator where we're spending an awful lot of money as you well know uh to incarcerate uh but then when they serve their time they get out we have this high recidivism and and, and a lot of those that get locked up go back to their same way of life They're really not get, getting them ready integrated and and prepared right. to to be productive uh, in society rather than a menace to society. I will say Commissioner Burrell Kane has gone, done a lot yes. along those lines to improve that situation. I think that in, in combination with, for instance, Accelerate coming along with Ryan Miller being over our workforce yeah. and, and working together, we need everybody pulling in the same direction, and we don't need 30 different programs. That's I think people get lost in the shuffle often. Uh, so I do believe we will see better opportunity there. But the other thing we've got to do is prosecute crime. Uh, as you know, I'm an attorney, and, and I do a lot of criminal defense work, but the prosecution of a crime and the process of that, we, we don't need activist uh, DAs who are trying to decide how they want to run uh, the program. You need to prosecute the crimes. We have public defenders. I serve as a public defender in different jurisdictions. We need to move through the process, but uh, it's unfortunate. This is more on a national level, but we see the attempt not to elect judges but to elect DAs that yeah. would just disregard the law. We're not going to do that in the state of Mississippi, and, and it's very unfortunate that we've seen it on both sides of the coast. Uh, and they're seeing a massive increase in violent crime. Now, some people say, well, those numbers are down from 1970. Yeah, that it's, if they're going up, that's the wrong right, trajectory. Right. Whether I'm historically down over the years, if I'm up. But, but I do think that there has to be a level of respect. Uh, for law and order, our law enforcement people that are out there every day. It's a tough job, and we're right. having a harder and harder time to fill those jobs. But uh, but we have to look at every person that's incarcerated that's coming back out is someone who likely has dependents, has maybe children, has a family, and they need to be gainfully employed. Our workforce participation rate is one of the lowest in the country, yep. and that is an area where we can hit that mark. But the other thing we have to do, uh, if we're going to set up the programming, and they're going to participate in the programming, then the parole board needs to make sure that they're doing their job yeah. and they're evaluating that and they're looking. There's a difference between a nonviolent crime and a violent crime. Totally. And uh, and you go back to being a good conservative and being a good fiscal conservative, the question is are we benefiting by incarcerating someone who has a nonviolent crime uh, outside of the boundaries of the parole bill? I agree. We passed a major parole bill that had percentages of service and if people are serving greater than that percentage without justification that's bad fiscal policy yeah it is and, and it's not really accomplishing anything uh, for the most part anyhow when we're talking about non-violent that's offenders right. they're, right. they're not uh, they don't have the propensity uh, upon release to go out and commit a violent crime that's correct and, and and they're likely gainfully employed at some level and right. we have a different situation in today's world because we are so starved for labor for workforce is that people are more receptive receptive to people who have had criminal history to come into their environment and work. I, I was with a young man yesterday in court, and I looked at him. He was in his 20s. He was healthy. I said, you're healthy? You're capable? He said, yes. 
he needs to be gainfully employed. And yeah. when I say gainfully employed, I don't mean working for somebody sporadically for cash. Right. He needs to be employed, getting a paycheck on Friday, participating in society. Self-sufficient. And supporting his family, being a good taxpayer, a good citizen, and enjoying it. I told him, I said, that will keep you in control of your life. So many times people think conservatives or Republicans, they want to overly control your life. We don't want to. We want you to go earn so that you can do as you sure, see fit. Exactly. That's the freedom of capitalism. No doubt about it. That often it. gets overlooked. Uh, it's amazing how that works out. It's it's the liberty of work. That's right. It it, uh, it is liberating, I should say, and that's what we ought to be focused on. I totally agree. I think Ryan Miller was a good selection, yes. by the way, uh, for that effort, workforce development. Um, Accelerate Mississippi, That's I believe, right. is the name yes. of the program. Yeah. And uh, i, I got to tell you, working with economic development, it is the number one thing, and you know this, that we hear from employers is the right. quali- availability of qualified workforce, right. number one. Thing. And, you know, the governor, uh, lieutenant governor spoke of uh, the MFLEX program, you yeah. know, working with, with different businesses, especially small businesses. Yeah. Ten, ten employees, $2.5 million investment. We want to take care of them. We want to make sure it's good. We yeah. want to push that message across the state. We welcome people from the state of Mississippi uh, to come in here and work. Appreciate our workforce. it. Yep. Senator Daniel Sparks has been our guest. Always good to see you, Senator. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Gerard. Yep. We'll take a break right here on Middays from the Neshoba County Fair. We're in the Element Well Studios at Founder Square. We'll be right back.